Hi, I'm Eric Meyer. Welcome to my shop. And today I'm going to show you how I made this miter plane based on the Stanley number no. nine. So I'm starting with some O1 tool steel. This stuff comes pre-ground, which is great for my purposes. It means there's less work getting it flat, square. And here, just laying out for the upcoming joinery work I need to do. And for the front and the back, I'm using screws to hold this all together. And for the sole, I'm actually going to dovetail that. Now I went with screws for this part just because I wanted to try something new, do a little experimentation, and see how well it works for future builds. So now I'm onto the dovetails, and I'm using the bandsaw to remove most of the waste. Now I'll come in with a chisel, of all things, and I can knock out all of those tabs pretty easily. Now this is fairly similar to working with wood. You're just laying out a line, and then you're working up to that line. Now instead of using a chisel, I'm just using a file. And here I'm laying out for the sole. So this is my baseline, and then the tails get transferred to the pins, just like you would in a wooden dovetail. And now I'm just using files and the bandsaw to just slowly work down to that line. Double checking my fit, and once I have it, just drive it home with a brass hammer. Now I'm using a transfer punch to transfer the holes I drilled earlier to the front. And those are getting center drilled, then drilled. I'm doing that over on the lathe so I can have some pretty accurate measurements. And then now they're all getting tapped and just held in temporarily. Here, trying to remove a lot of the waste for the, to form the mouth. Just a hacksaw and files to get the most of it out of the way. Now this was actually a really tricky piece to cut. This is going to be the bed. And I took out most of that waste there on the bandsaw. And now I'm just peening it to the sole. Just a lot of light taps with a ball peen hammer and then I can file it excuse me then I can file it all flush and I'll make it look pretty later so now I'm back over at the lathe and I'm just slowly working those surfaces down so they're all in the same plane and so I said lathe because this is actually a lathe with a milling arm attachment so I don't quite have the same rigidity as you would with a mill, but this works for my purposes. Now I'm going to uh, drill and tap for the thumb screw that's going to hold on my lever cap. Again, just double checking everything's in the same plane. Now I need to work on the movable mouth. Again, it's drill, tap, and screws. And those are just temporary. This should give you a general idea of the shape. Everything is oversized, so I can file it all true after final assembly. So now I'm on to the lever cap, and I've actually based this lever cap uh, not so much off of the Stanley Number no. 9's lever cap. I actually have an old transitional planes lever cap that I really like the proportions of, so I copied that one. And so what you've seen me do so far is drill out most of the waste, and then now I'm just going in with a 3 8 inch end mill to make a little slot, and that's going to be what help holds the lever cap to the plane itself. And now I'm back over on the bandsaw, just trying to remove a lot of that waste. Now this was a sketchy setup, admittedly. I needed to take off part of the top of that lever cap so it's angled downwards. It just meant there was less filing to do. Now I'm back in the vise and just filing everything so it looks nice. So this here is going to be the tensioning thumb screw for the lever cap. And I actually based this one off of the ones that come on the Veritas hand planes. This was a tricky part for me to make. 
because it needed both internal and external threads. And to quote Blondie Hacks, Yahtzee. Now this is, I'm gonna call it the shoe that goes on the bottom. And I really should have made this part bigger. And it's, it's something on my to-do list to go back and redo. You can kind of see how that all goes together there. So now as you tighten the lever cap down, it should put more pressure on the blade, holding everything secure. So this here is going to be the handle. Knock everything flush, and now it is getting silver soldered together, and then a lot of file work just to try to make it look pretty. Now this is going to be the retaining nut for the handle to help hold on the wooden piece that's going to go on there as well. So now the rest of the handle is made from this block of hemp wood. So that's strands of hemp that get pressed and glued together. It's pretty neat stuff. It's, a, it's weird. It's really hard on what would be face grain and it's fairly weak on the end grain. It splits rather easily, I found. I think if this would have been stabilized, it would have gone a lot better, and I actually had to make this part a couple of times because it kept breaking on me. Um, so, you know, I'm just using a bandsaw and a scrub plane to try to get it roughly round, and now I'm back over on the lathe and I'm using it in ways you probably shouldn't to try to get something that's you know roughly egg-shaped for that handle. And you know a wood lathe would have been a lot better for this, made it a lot easier, but I don't have it and we're gonna use what we have. And overall I'm, I'm really happy with the handle and, um, and I really like the way it looks when it was dyed. So now here I'm moving back to the front of the plane. Um, I didn't want to waste a lot of brass making uh, you know, threads, so I uh, used, I turned down some threaded rod and I'm going to end up uh, riveting this brass cap to that threaded rod here in a second. So I found a, you know, about a washer's worth is, is pretty good for how much you need to peen something. And I could have filed this flat, but I really like the way it looked with the hammer marks. So I'm going to actually end up leaving this a little proud. Now, after it was secured, went over to the lathe, chucked it up, and then turned it down and made it all look pretty. light sanding just to try to get some of those deeper scratches out and there you can kind of see how that looks okay so i'm going to take a moment to explain everything that's been done here and how it all works so starting with this knob this acts the same way as the screw on a frog so this knob here and this screw serve the same purpose the only reason i went with the knob was i make that easier to adjust by hand and then I didn't have to go around looking for a screwdriver if I ever needed to adjust it. So when your blade goes in, just like any other hand plane, cap wire slides open, or the, excuse me, the lever cap slides over. Then you can use this knob here to tighten the lever cap down to the blade. This knob here, will actually go through the top of the infill and there'll be a little slot in there. What I can do is I can loosen this and then the front here will move forward and backwards and that will open and close the mouth as I need it and then you can tighten it down and that'll keep it from moving. And then here is another screw. Um, this essentially uh, it mostly acts like a depth stop and I went with a quarter 40 thread. So that's what, 40 threads per inch. Um, so you got a lot of fine tuning you can do to get the mouth exactly where you want it. 
Um, and again, I just went with knobs and all these. Um, the original has uh, uses uh, screws here and here. And I didn't want to do that just because, again, I didn't want to go looking around for a screwdriver every time I wanted to make an adjustment. So now I am cutting down stock and I'm actually turning my own screws. So you can't just use any off the shelf screws, at least the ones that I could find weren't going to work for these purposes. Um, I needed something with that had a countersunk head on them, but were also a positive drive. And definitely check out Carl Holte's website and his blog if you're interested in making any type of hand plane. He goes into the benefits of both dovetails and screws, and it's a great resource. So now more hemp wood, and I am shaping the rear infill here. And you know, for as much trouble as I had turning it, it actually cuts really beautifully. It's kind of hard to plane though. It's it's weird stuff. So here you can kind of see how that movable jaw is going to work. I need to turn those pins into a second set of tails. So those need to get filed. A little notch gets filed on them. Kind of see the tail shape there. And that actually lets, that allows you to do the peening, which locks everything together. Now with the screws though, you don't need to worry about that. Those can just get thread locker on them. Um, I will do some peening on the screws. And here again, I'm using that washer trick. I uh, picked that up from a knife maker. I don't remember who, so I'm sorry I can't credit you for the idea. Um, so I just I just want a little bit extra material just to kind of help peen everything closed. And you know this is it's not so much about hitting it hard. It's just a lot of little consistent taps to slowly deform that metal. So I work through all the sides and then I start working on the sole here. I broke out the angle grinder, trying to save myself a little bit of time and getting all of that flush. It was visually flush. It was not perfectly flush though. I should say everything was flush. It was not flat. Um, I really should have just spent the time with the file because I needed to in the end anyway. Now this is just kind of one of my little shop hacks, I guess. Uh, I pretty much just grab any round thing in the shop when I need to make a curve or a radius and old tape happened to be the closest thing that had a radius that looked rather nice on the plane so that's what I used. Often I use a soda can or a bottle of water, tape, just really whatever's around. I don't plan it too hard. And that that handle there, man that caused a lot of problems trying to get the back flushed up. Did my steps out of order. I should have flushed the back up first and then installed that handle because it it made getting everything around there flat and flush difficult. So now I'm on to installing the hemp infills and oh that was a challenge and a half and I actually ended up breaking the infill a couple of times because they were, the tolerances were just way too tight. And really it was just a lot of file and chisel work to get everything down and then the rear infills get a, a rivet to help hold them together. And I kind of gouged my top there and I was trimming the top in, or the front infill there with a bandsaw. I had to come back with a file and take everything down so it looked good again. And now we're going to test it out for the first time. <laughs> it works. 
Now I'm in, in refinement mode that uh, the front didn't have enough clearance to actually move and I found out that thumb screw was crushing the infill so I ended up having to switch directions and add in this brass plate and this was a nerve-wracking setup um, that's one eighth inch rod that's getting riveted in there into three sixteenth inch um, sides so I had no room to make a mistake and at this point I think I'm about a hundred and sixty or so hours into the build and a mistake would have been catastrophic at this point so now it's just a lot of tedious file work and sandpaper to try to get everything perfectly flat And I didn't quite like the, the look of everything. So the front, so if the infills were dyed black and then the steel was, I used some gun bluing on it to turn everything darker color. And here I'm just quickly making what's referred to as a hot dog. It goes on the side and it gives you something to grip when you're using the plane for shooting. And that's actually a common mis misconception with miter planes. Uh, they weren't designed for shooting. They were designed for all smoothing tasks. And as you can tell, they do an excellent job at smoothing even, you know, just all kinds of woods. And, you know, it works great for shooting as well. So thank you for joining me for this build. I think in total I have about 170 hours into the making of this plane. This plane was very much a learning opportunity and while I can see all of the mistakes in it, it is also one of my favorite objects that I have made. If you want to see more, I have a playlist for all of the videos that went into making this plane. It's about an hour's worth of content. So thank you for joining me for this build. If you like what you saw, subscribing and sharing and the thumbs up likes really helps out the channel. Thank you so much for sticking around to watch this. I truly appreciate it.